Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out some new information regarding the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. Uh, they have how many Pokemon are returning and we get a little bit of expanded information here. So this is going to be a really casual video. I'm just going to read through it and sort of talk. Uh, the hidden treasure of Area Zero is coming. Discover the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Continue your Scarlet and Violet adventure with this DLC containing two expansions. The Teal Mask Step out of the Paldia region as you take a school trip to the land of Kiti sorry, Kitakame. Kitakami? There you'll meet new people and Pokemon while unraveling the mysteries behind the area's folk tales. This will release in the fall. Then you have the Indigo Disc, which continues the story of you becoming an exchange stu student at the Blueberry Academy. Uh, most of this unusual school is located under the ocean. Okay, so it's going to be like a like an Atlantis situation, is that what's going on? Uh, and its curriculum emphasizes Pokemon battling. This will release in the winter, so very much so mirrors the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra in terms of timing, and it also seems like there, there's a likely chance that the first one will be kind of like a really short one, the second one will be a little bit longer. Uh, then you get some new Pokemon, you get Oki Doggy. I'm gonna probably mispronounce these, I don't really care that much. Uh, Mun Kidori and Fe Pheasant Dipity. Uh, um, not really much information about them. Then, of course, you have the familiar Pokemon returning. Uh, 230 Pokemon are coming back. So, again, that's sort of to entice the sale of the DLC. A lot of people saying you could just trade them in. Um, you, 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 you tell me what's more convenient. Just buying a $30 expansion or sitting there for hours and trading stuff in, like... This is how psychology works. That's how they get you. This is way more convenient just to shell out the $30 than it is to actually, like, you know... If you don't want to pay for home, the GTS is basically unusable. Um, you can only have, like, 30 Pokemon in there, so good luck. Uh, and then someone even brought up Wonder Trade as a viable option. Like, the <laughs> go ahead and spend thousands of hours uh, Wonder Trading. So basically, you either got to pay for Pokemon home or um, <clears throat> pay for the DLC. It's up to you. Uh, so here we got um, some more information about it. I'm not going to go through like the Vivalon stuff. Like I don't think that many people care about that. But here we get the characters. So in the Teal Mask, you'll put on a traditional Jin Jin Jinbi outfit and take part of the festival that's held on the uh, annually in the village. Part two, uh, you'll don the uniform of the Blueberry Academy as an exchange student. The Blueberry Academy uniforms look pretty cool. Um, here you get some characters. So as your adventures unfold, you will meet a variety of characters. Let's meet Kyren and Carmen, a brother and sister who appear in both part one and part two. These call Kitakami home and they attend the Blueberry Academy of Students. So it seems like these two areas are actually close in uh, relevance to each other. Um, maybe they live on the island and then they <laughs> take a submarine to school. Uh, Carmen, the older sister, uh, is a strong-willed person that can be a little bit selfish. But always looks out for her little brother, even if she isn't the best at showing it. Word is that she can be chilly towards people from other regions, also she's like racist. <laughs> her little brother, uh, Kyron, has a quiet, gentle nature, and he often hides behind his big sister. It seems he's curious about you, though, when you arrive from the Paldia region. Next we got, um... Okay, so I'm not going to get into the terror raids. That, that's not technically part of the DLC anyway. How to purchase, like, y you guys know how to use the eShop. Um, introducing the legendary Pokemon you'll meet in this DLC. It's time to introduce the legendary Pokemon. Part 1, you will encounter Ogre Pawn, which does dons a fearsome mask. And in part 2, you'll meet uh, Terrapagos. I don't know how to pronounce this thing. <laughs> It'll appear um, with its glittering aura. The heroes... Um, I'm not going to pronounce their names again. These three. The Yokai Watch. The two Yokai Watch <laughs> monsters and the flamingo looking thing. The, the pheasant. Uh, in part 1... Um, Three Pokemon named XX and X. Uh, they're beloved by people of the village as heroes that protected the land of uh, Kitakami in the past. And stone statues were made in their likeness to express the people's gratitude towards these three Pokemon. Kind of give me those um, Tapu Coco, Tapu Lele, tap, Tapu Fini, Tapu whatever the other one was called vibes. Uh, like with the island folk kind of um, like revering them as gods. Uh, so in part one uh, you and two, you'll be able to encounter 230 familiar Pokemon that have been living in other regions, but had not appeared in Scarlet and Violet, as for which uh, Pokemon 
um, will appear in part one and part two. Uh, please look forward to finding out. The number above includes Pokemon that you'll be able to bring. Um, so a lot of people, I, I don't want to keep harping on the whole Dex thing because like I don't, I'm honestly really apathetic towards a lot of it. But it's just crazy to see how many people don't think that the Dex cut was financially motivated. Like it has nothing to do with the amount of space on the on the cartridge or like optimization because clearly they can't optimize anyway. It's because if you bundle these new areas with familiar Pokemon, people are more likely to to buy it, right? Um, yeah, you could say, like, before you had to pay for Pokemon Bank, which, you know, in my opinion, Pokemon Bank was kind of sus. Like, they, they could have easily had a way to transfer Pokemon without making you pay. But on top of that, like, the GTS is locked behind Pokemon Home now, so you have to, you ha literally have to pay. Um, unless you have a friend that's willing to trade you 230 Pokemon. Furthermore, these 230 will likely have exclusives for Violet and exclusives for Scarlet, so you get that whole, like... You'll have to buy two packs if you want all the content thing. I think the idea of having two versions of a game was cool back in like the 90s and the early 2000s. But honestly, in my opinion, they should have like dropped that a while ago. Like nobody's actually going around and trading with their friends. Y'all are doing it online anyway. Um, and then we got, I, I believe this is the original one we read. So that's pretty much it for the new information. We did not know that there would be 230 Pokemon before. We got a little bit of insight into the characters. And uh, yeah, just guys, let me know in the comment section how you're feeling towards this. Personally, and, and I'm going to be completely honest, I'm very apathetic towards Scarlet and Violet. Like, I had fun while I played it, but I just felt like it was missing something. Like, it needed a little more meat to its uh, bones. Like, I, I could get over optimization, honestly. Like, optimization and, and glitches, like, I could get over that. I just didn't feel like the game was very meaty in its content. Like... A lot of people bring up that there's like 18 different towns and are you know objectives and this and that but like all they really did was team star was split from the main story so they had their own like quote objectives which you would have had with team rocket anyway um the the bosses were kind of like um the totems from sun and moon but granted sun and moon didn't also have gym so you kind of get that little bit of extra content there but like it just felt like the game just, I, I don't know how to explain it. It just felt like you went to one spot, did a thing. You went to another spot, did a thing. And nothing really felt very memorable. Like, I can barely remember. I, I can't remember any of the town names. I can barely remember any of the characters. Uh, I just feel like there was just something missing from this game. And again, I'm not trying to be a hater. Uh, anybody that uses the word hater, by the way, unironically, is just the worst. But I'm not trying to be like a hater about this. Like, I genuinely feel this way. Um, I feel like Scarlet and Violet had a lot going for it, but it just, I just feel like it was kind of just missing something. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way, but that's why I'm kind of apathetic. I will be getting the DLC for you guys because it's my job to review it. Then you guys can make an informed decision on whether or not you want to buy it. This is what us content creators have to do. So before I see anyone in the comments saying that, oh, well, you're buying it. I'm literally only buying it for YouTube. So that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.